Tuesday. I certainly appreciate you. It is fine. I um what happened to the on a Tuesday guy? The almond Tuesday? What happened to the on a Tuesday guy? The oh, oh the guy that used shit. to sing. On a yeah. Tuesday going up. What was his name? Was it the week? No, it wasn't the weekend. Uh, it was a crazy name. McConan? Mannequin? Is that who sung that song? I don't... Yes. I mean, that was his name. Um, wow. He hear me? He hit us with the, um... Remember them girls that sung that song? The S is for super and the U is for unique. Remember oh, he yes. <laughs> I hate you so much. Ew. That song was the shit. It for was three weeks for them. Three weeks. Woo! And listen, everybody. Rap real fast at the end. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh Lord. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. We're going to okay. get it done. Oh, so we are two dope girls. And today I'm doing it for all the dope girls <laughs> who made a bad expensive decision with their hair and they are currently trying to deal with it um that would be me yeah yeah i got braids i'm actually halfway through taking my braids out now you know i just got these braids probably like three and a half but i was ago. just gonna say <laughs> i am over it <laughs> i'm over it like oh. i'm so over. when i went there and they first they changed my appointment. Then I went at three. They like, oh, come back in an hour. Came back in an hour, and they still and I still sat there and waited for two more hours. The Lord was sending me a message, and I felt it. I heard it. The sweet baby Jesus. I heard the message, but I just decided to sit there anyway. And anyway, I, yeah, I'm taking my braids out. So, yeah, that's that. Mm-hmm. Okay, let let this dope girl say something as someone who is a tour. <sighs> of uh, braids um some people and i'm not just talking about you dope girl i'm just putting out a psa some people do not need to get braids like i had a cousin <laughs> kind of like you not in a rude way i'm just saying and my cousin used to always like change her hair every week and she could not commit and i feel like braids are a commitment like by the time you sit down and do all that work yeah. and get them done and pay all that money like, they're going to be in your hair for a minute. And as a dope girl who you know will let a good braid last for a yeah. good time, I'm sitting up here like, mm, how can I refresh these uh, twists that are currently on my head? Because it's been a month and I'm going to need to last a little longer. Yeah. Like, I t- you know I don't play that game. Like, you know you, I need all my money's worth. So, anyways, long story short, just to some of the dope girls out there, I know these braid styles be looking good, but some of y'all, you need more flexibility. That's yep. all I'm gonna save say. your need money, more, save y'all's money, like just save your money. Oof, yep, yep, it. yep, yep. That's me. I am someone who consistently, constantly changes my hair, and usually when I get braids, I'm the same way. You know, I will, I'll have them for a good amount of time, but. I don't know. My level of being able to commit has just really like decreased. Like, okay, okay, this is probably why I'm single. I cannot settle down. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, my cousin didn't like for her baby hairs to show through. <laughs> that's that's why I take a out because the mm-hmm. perimeter is just not giving mm-hmm. me what I need. I mm-hmm. like it fresh. So mm-hmm. that's it. <sighs> yeah. yeah, and I've worked through that. I've worked through that. <laughs> Put some gel on the edges and let's move through. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's move through. I should have talked to you two hours ago, but um, yeah, yeah. Anyway. I wouldn't have tried to change your mind. No. <laughs> you have to live in your truth. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so dope girl of the week, getting right along. Dope girl of the week Woo. um is absolutely going to miss. Malia Obama for getting the whole <laughs> goddamn life of Lollapalooza. When I saw that video of you hard twerking and lifting your shirt up, I was like, girl, you better get it. You better enjoy this last summer before you go to school and have to be responsible. Like, all of it. Um, well, you know, she's going, she took a year off. 
So she going to enjoy this entire year. I feel like we're going to get a whole bunch oh. of videos. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was the beginning. Malia, I <laughs> hope you have a great time. That's a beautiful feeling. I love that they gave her the freedom to take that year off because sometimes you do yes. need that. Like, absolutely. if I had it to do again, I would have absolutely taken time off between high school Me and too, college team. because I think I would have appreciated it more and I could have been a little bit more steady with what I chose to do. It would have given me time to live a little bit. I just, Agreed. I didn't know. So I appreciate that about her. But <laughs> the problem is she's been getting a lot of slack. People, oh, she wasn't at the DNC. Oh, look at her up yeah. there. She's the president's daughter. Um, she's not running for office. Why exactly would she need to be at the DNC? If Chelsea was there, that's the only person who needed to be there. Now, if Chelsea was up there twerking, then I would have been like, right, then I'd have been like, well, damn, that's fucked up. Um, her father's on his way out. I don't know, I would have liked to see a little nice uh, twerk from Chels, because that's part of the reason why I don't care for her, because she has zero personality compared to her parents, so I just kind of be like, ugh. Are we going to act like Chelsea Clinton is a thing? We're still going to do this. <laughs> well, she they... she brings nothing to anything. <laughs> and I just. Uh, well, sorry. To the DNC, she was something. I, well, I she's been anointed, like but she is not the one to me. <laughs> <laughs> so mm. in about, mm, I'm going to say 16 years, you would like to see Malia up there talking to um, introducing Michelle. I, well, listen, I am still about uh Mama Obama running in 2020. Like, so, uh, see, so unless I something happens in, in these eight yeah. years, no, unless yeah. something happens in these 8 years, I don't think America's going to be ready for that. Now, oh, 16 Mama years Obama maybe. she been cussed everybody out. That's why she ain't running. She, she, <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. It is about America as well, but Mama Obama be like, I have to cuss all them out. Um, but just getting back to Malia real quick. Here, here was my one concern because you know there was not one but two videos. There was the yes, first video. I did. Yeah, so yes, yes. The second one she's twerking on her friends. Yeah. Okay, and I wanna. This is my issue. And trust me, let me, uh, you already know. Because okay. I, say, I had no problem with her clothes. I had no problem with her age. I have no problem with her being where she is and doing what she does. I do have a problem with the fact that this baby cannot hold a beat. Like, lovely, yeah. this is Girl. why, this is why. She needs a black friend. She she needs one other black girl up in that school that she went to. I hope she go to college and get black friends. Like, I really do because she needs them. Like, she needs them. I can tell there are cultural deficiencies. Not on purpose. I think her parents have done the best job that they can do considering she was trapped in a White House. But, right. girl, From please go to college and get you 18, all the yeah. Negro friends. Like, go go be Harvard, in the Black though. Student Union. <laughs> yes. Go be in the Black Student Union. Join a Black sorority, please. And just, like, be with and amongst the Black people because that way you were dancing, that was embarrassing. Like, I, like, I was oh. like... Oh, we know. Do that's what I oh know about. I didn't even know, know about the outfit. I was like, oh no, look at her dancing. Oh God. <laughs> and you know, Jesus, I wasn't, I didn't know we were going to go there tonight, but um, we can because honestly, everything you're saying, I, that's my first thought. Like when I was seeing other people saying stuff, I was like, wait, what? What are we talking about? Because I was just trying to figure out why you was looking all spastic. Like, girl, <laughs> I needed you to let that backbone slip. Like, it, it is very, very clear to me that she has definitely lived a very insulated life. And her interaction with other Black people is probably limited to her mom, her dad, and her grandma. That's um, it. And right. you're right. And it, we saw it all when she, I mean, now don't get me wrong. You know, she went up for Bryson Tiller, but a lot of the white girls go up for Bryson Tiller. So they that's do. Not, they do. Um, but I was just, when I saw it, I was like, girl, you don't got a two step. You ain't got, it. I mean, I'm, I'm glad she didn't dab. I am glad she didn't dab. And I didn't want her out there hitting a homie Quan or whatever, all them dances were. I didn't need all that. But like a good two step and maybe let your backbone slip a little bit. That's all I wanted to see. I, I was, yeah, that was what disturbed me the most. So yeah. 
Yeah, keep on yeah. keeping. Um, have fun this year because, like I said, I feel like this is the first of many, many videos. Um, and oof, if we have videos of me at eighteen, mm. right. Right. That's... Really, if we have videos of me at 16. So, Sasha, you have a good time, too, girl. I'm not yeah. going to leave you out. I had... actually feel like Sasha is the turn up. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, she probably is. Everybody around. Well, no, there's a, there's a, no, no, I know who the turn up is. There's one with a white girl, and she, I think she has some black shorts on, and she's rapping hard as shit. And I was oh, like, no, she's the turn up. I thought it. Well, her friend is the friend. Friend. I don't know who that oh, her was. friend is the friend her She's friend the is the one that be like girl come on um we gonna get ready to go at three and we're gonna drink this before we go and we're gonna smoke this before we head out there and then you're gonna hit this pill and malia is just sitting there like i don't understand wait my parents told me no and she's like girl please and, so, <laughs> and she come up with a good lie to keep y'all out of trouble when it uh when it all come down like that's that friend and like she'd be like, okay, tell your parents that we're on the Right. And she's a <laughs> she does. All and the, the black tapes. boyfriend. Like, right. Yeah. The low key black yeah. boyfriend. Right. She's the one. Because I was, I was like, she's the one. She was real. I saw Malia and I was like, oof. But she's the one who my eye kept being drawn to because she was all the way into it. I was like, okay, girl. That's right. You she had a good time. And she watching. had a little container in her hand. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh, you're having a great time. She's having <laughs> a great time. I ain't mad at you, homegirl. I ain't mad. Um, so moving on to gossip. Um, two people who I don't even really know if we care about these people. But Tweet, you remember her? With the masturbation Ooh, song. Uh-huh. There's my name. She is dating Jamal Bryant. Is this yeah. true? Yep. Mm, I saw that. Oh, okay. Yep. I saw um, that. Um, didn't he just have a baby? Okay. So, well, yes. Yes. He just claimed. Well, let me take the baby. Let me take the back. He just claimed a baby. The baby, oh, like, okay. three. Oh, but okay. he's, <laughs> but he's, he is, he just now, this earlier this year, took responsibility and for you guys who don't know pastor jamal bryant is the pastor of a very large church in central baltimore called empowerment temple yes, yes I'm out there well loved. um well loved <laughs> and he is probably most well known in terms of fuckboyness for the time that a woman stood up in his church and said um yeah i've been fucking the pastor for yeah a good time going on now and he stepped down for about a half a day, and then he said God called him back to the pulpit and um, to show that he was human, and uh, he he make mistakes. So oh, and don't forget he oh he was probably, married at time. Yes, he was who to yeah. to uh, Giselle, who's currently on Real Housewives of Potomac. Yes, yep, don't forget him. about him being in the pulpit and yelling out that these hoes ain't loyal. He's also that well was, known yeah. for that. He's definitely he well known for these also, hoes ain't loyal. Around yes. the city. Also a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, which a dope girl will have to tell a story on another day, but she is not a fan of the Kappas. Yeah. Anyhow. And, mm-hmm, <laughs> agreed. Um, and um, what else? Around town, around Baltimore, I don't know if it's made the national news, but he's well known for being with the ladies, young ladies. He likes the young, pretty ladies, and he likes to sleep with them without using protection. So that's what he's known for. And he is currently dating Tweets. So Tweets, I feel like at this point it is <laughs> giving me I mean, I wanna say we rooted for you, but but in another in another you know what, here's the thing. I don't even know where to go with this, but here's the thing. <laughs> Tweets is now gonna go over on my list with Alicia Keys of like you know what, girl? I thought, I thought you <laughs> cared about yourself, and I thought <laughs> you cared about other black women, and I thought you were about empowerment. I thought, you know, well, first of all, tweet. I thought you was a lesbian, so let me throw that out there. Let's start um, there. Let's just go and ahead I and thought start there. Yeah. Missy Elliott was satisfying your box thoroughly, and that's who she <laughs> was fucking around with. That's who I thought. <laughs> um, but. Maybe times have changed. You might be like that woman in Flowetry who's now also straight. So, yeah. 
You know what well, I mean? You know, it's your life. Get it. Do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. But you, Jamal ain't it, girl. And again, I thought you were about, I thought you were about something. And now I'm seeing that you're not. So the good thing is, Tweet, I wasn't listening to your new music anyhow. <laughs> I'm mean, right. so Sorry, you man. haven't hurt me deeply. Like it's fine. I mean, I guess we all know where this is heading. Um, maybe you'll get a good song out of it that'll take you back to the medium parts of the charts. Like I don't know, but right, right. Mm-hmm. Um, all of that. I have nothing else to add because I thoroughly agree with everything you just said. So <sighs> moving right along. Um. I just want to have a quick little word with K. Michelle. So rest in peace to Toya Wright's brothers. That's Lil Wayne's ex-wife slash baby mama. And K. Michelle decided to get onto the social medias and at Toya Wright and send her long condolences and about her brothers. And, you know, we've, we blocked each other in the past. I didn't even record it. I mean, I didn't even take a picture of it, but I know we've blocked each other in the past, so I would have DM'd you, but I mean, I don't care what happened. We just all need the, I give my condolences. I'll just roll my eyes. And this is why I came, Michelle. I'm not in your head. I don't know if what you're doing is genuine. What I do know is that you're genuinely, genuinely messy, generally messy, not genuinely, generally messy. So whether she meant this, these condolences or not, it to me, came across as just very, I don't know, opportunistic and just very empty and just very like, girl, you have the option to be quiet too. Like, Toya <laughs> Rice going through something, your condolences are not going to change that. If you really felt that strongly, send the girl some flowers and just be quiet. But you all on social media and at her talking about we blocked it. It just, to me, felt very just... Amber Rosey, you know how Amber Rose like these last. <laughs> it did, it did. You know how Amber Rose these last oh, couple of weeks, God. like she just be popping up, to, inserting herself and in, in just like random shit. Like she popping up, talk, giving a shout out to Iggy, talking about oh yeah, fuck niggas, and she's somewhere else talking about she want to have another child. And she, I was just like, oh, why are you doing this? It's almost like. You have now crossed the line to where your need for attention is just kind of sociopathic. Like, I just, I don't know. It just felt ugly to me. And it just, I ain't really been a fan of K. Michelle for a while now. Because I just, her, your social media antics are fucking it up for you. They really are. And I need somebody to pull you to the side and say, yo, you got to get off of social media. Like, you see what happened to Meek Mill. Like, you got to get off social media before it's too late. You do. So that's all I had to say about that. That's it. I have a, I have a different opinion. Oh, um, go ahead. You, cause you, we, we can't agree with everything. So this is good. Remember, they said we need to have disagreements. So. Here we go. Here we go. The feedback that we got. Um. <laughs> I, okay. Here's the thing. I hear you on the timing and it was a bit extra. However, as a K Michelle fan, this this is K. Like this is how she is. Like I don't like this is how she reacts about things. And you know how you have people who don't have good I don't want to say she don't have good common sense, but she just likes she does. She makes things about her. And that's like that's part of K Michelle to me. Okay. Like she doesn't know how to just be like, hey, girl, sorry for your loss. Because, like, Missy Elliott tweeted not too far after her. And Missy's was like, you know, toy right in my heart and in my prayers. Done. Right. Literally under 140 characters and moved on. And I'm sure Missy has Toya's number and email and text or whatever. So I didn't have a problem with this saying it on Twitter, but I... I agree with you that, you know, all the whole, like, backstory about, like, girl, we done blocked each other. I was like, okay, I can't with you on this, but I can in the same vein because I know this is you. Like, this is how she is. Like, she just, I don't know. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying, like, I kind of was like, oh, that's game shell. Like, I just really was. I was like, yeah, that sounds like the way 
she would reach out to someone like she genuinely thought I really do think I guess that's my point I really do think in that moment she thought she was being genuine and it's like this is so bad but she actually thought she was saying something nice and I don't <laughs> doubt that that's why I'm saying I'm I, what I'm saying is yeah I, I don't know I'm not in her head so I don't know if she was being genuine and she probably was it's just that because everything else you do is so messy this to me feels the same way and then the way you presented the message girl I would have DM'd you but we didn't block each other a long time ago and I know we didn't head out differences but I just you and my prayers and I'm gonna send my condolences out and even though you know you fucked me over it's just I mean she goes on for it was like a lot of five me, messages me, me in that message it was yeah this girl just lost not one but two of her brothers <laughs> It's she's not right now thinking about she's about to divorce Miss Hit. She's not right now thinking about you and your fat ass. She's really not. And for you to be saying all this stuff, bringing it back up, putting yourself in the middle of the situation to me just felt just stupid. It felt stupid. And I guess also the other thing is it was wasn't even a couple of weeks ago where the rumor was that she had put up a picture of Memphis from marriage boot camp yelling real hard into his face she did. and the she thing did. is i'm not against that actually when i heard that i chuckled thoroughly however mm-hmm. it's just you see what i mean it's just like yeah, oh, girl yeah. nobody's even talking about that no more you won the case you've been vindicated why are you still on it it's just like the same thing with her on i think maybe what it is is just i'm getting too much of of k michelle doing this stupid ass shit and it's like yo you've moved beyond that like i need you if you a boss i need you to move like one because you're still moving like you know a cast made of love and hip-hop that's how you're still acting like honestly yeah and i to me and she right does. now you're at a yeah. higher level you're at another level at least at least give me you know a kelly Rowland, a michelle you're not gonna give me that. I mean, I know you can't quite give me Beyonce because you're not her, nowhere near. Ew. But you can at least give me a Michelle. Come on, girl. Stop acting like fucking hot Celine on Twitter. Like, but that's rest later for the show. Just okay, Michelle got on my nerves this week. I don't know. I totally get it. I, trust me, she's an acquired taste. <laughs> and I used to taste her, and that's what's so taste her. No, that came out wrong. <laughs> I used to thoroughly enjoy her. Remember when you rolled with me to the Best Buy? I think it started snowing, so I could go get her CD. Left you work like to bought go get her, her CD. I bought CD. her hard CD. And That's how hard I would ride CD. with her. Yes. Left yeah. work, rolled 20 minutes to the nearest thing so I could listen yeah. to it. Sat in the car, busted out the plastic. It was snowing on my way back with your CD. And listen to it continuously. Still do. I was a fan, but show you be mm, you be doing a lot. That's all I'm saying. Just I need you to not do so much all the time. Yeah. Speaking of somebody else who does a lot all the time, what the fuck did Kanye do this week? Like, uh, uh, listen, okay, just. For everyone who did not see, Kanye West set off a series of four tweets random in the middle of the day, probably like Monday, maybe Sunday, Monday, I don't know, whatever. But basically, he's like, he starts off by saying, you know, people want the music, we need to stop having barriers, talking about uh, the different the different streaming channels, right? Because, like, some people only put stuff on Apple. Some people only put stuff on Spotify. Some people put it on all of it. Some people make it exclusive for a week, whatever. So, Kanye, I felt him on that. I felt him on that tweet. That tweet, I was with him. I was like, yeah, because I'm going to tell you, a bitch got two subscriptions right now, and I'm getting real sick and tired of it. (laughs) No no offense to Jay-Z. I promise you, no offense to you. But as soon as Beyonce dropped that uh, album over to Spotify, yeah, I'm going to have to go and give you the deuces, bro. Like, I cannot, you know what? I'm not going to use this time to go into my <laughs> issues with the title. But t- title title probably does need to sell to Apple. Okay, that's a side note, though. That's a side note. And that, and that, and that is my opinion, Kanye. Just like your opinion is that Apple needs to go ahead and buy title. Now we we know, we saw, we heard in the news a few weeks ago that Apple was having conversations with title. Okay, that was on real news. That was on like Yahoo. 
So my point is, something is probably happening. Something is in the works. We know this. But as we all know, anybody with half a common sense, anybody who has a degree in finance like Maja from um, Cutting It in the ATL, <laughs> a degree from the DeVry in finance, um, these things take time. Like, Apple ain't just going to show up tomorrow and be like, you know what? Here's $200,000 million. We got you. Just split that on over to us. Like, that's not happening tomorrow. Like, that could take six months. That could take, a, that could take a long time to hammer out all the details, all the whatever. What we don't need in between, and by we, I mean the Carter Knowles family, um, <laughs> is Kanye, you inserting yourself with your, again, unsolicited opinion. So just like I just had an opinion and nobody cares about my opinion, nobody cares about your opinion. And that was my nobody. problem with the tweet. My problem wasn't that he had that feeling. My problem was like, no one asked you, Kanye. Like, no one asked you. Like, nobody asked you. And then my second problem was, you now are inserting, you're doing the K Michelle. You inserting yourself into something that don't have nothing to do with you. Did Jay-Z invite you to the business meeting? Because I don't he think didn't. he did. I, I don't think you were table. at the table. <laughs> I didn't see you at the table. So unless Jay said to you, can you please come with me to this meeting? I need you to give me some business advice. No one asked you. You're not sitting at the table. This is why you're off the Carter's Christmas card list. This is why you're not invited to Blue Ivy's tea parties. And this is why <laughs> right. you will stay broke trying to worry about a fashion show while everyone else around you is still making money. And I'm going to even include your wife, even though your wife is making money off of white privilege. But don't you find it funny, Kanye, that everyone in your circle keeps increasing their wealth except for you you don't only want to stay broke but yeah you're the only one that stay on twitter on some dumb fuck shit like there, there might be a correlation go. it might there be. might be now my problem with the tweet was actually a little bit different as a happy title subscriber <laughs> <laughs> clears throats <laughs> clears throat <laughs> i was mad because i'm like why jay-z got to um i was like why jay-z gotta sell to apple like apple don't own every yeah. fucking thing else yeah. this, is, this is about good goddamn time that somebody gave him some um a little bit of competition fuck apple even though i got mm-hmm. the iphone and i do like i apple was gonna products. say he, he uh, was on apple music <laughs> i was that's all right was. i'm not gonna throw you out there like that <laughs> i mean it's okay because i was but i'm just saying besides <laughs> that fuck apple they need some daggone competition and why he ain't talking about why they don't buy spotify up why you got about a black yeah. man's business? You know what I mean? And then on yeah. top of that, Title has something that nobody else has. They have Prince's whole goddamn huh. catalog. Oh, what and Beyonce. Fuck? Let's oh. not play that to the side. And That's a big draw for Beyonce, me. Beyonce, <laughs> a huge one. Why the fuck would he sell that to Apple? When he got, when he is sitting on, why would he do that? Why would he play himself yeah. short? He has something that is worth so much money. Uh-huh. Him, his every fucking generation from now until the earth blows up of the Nose Carter clan will have money uh-huh. as long as he has Prince's catalog, his yep. catalog, Beyonce's yep. catalog, and damn near everybody yep. else that's popping. But which mainly, is what they're after. Yeah. Right, which is what they're after. And they have everything else. And I think yeah. that no title is That's why quite, they're not going after Spotify. Mm-hmm. Right. No <laughs> title isn't quite at the level that Apple is, but Apple has been in the business a long time. Title just got started. And considering the fact that yep. they are relatively new, I think that they're doing a lot of things. And considering the fact that this is supposed to be your man, your mentor, your homeboy, mm-hmm. and all that, why the mm-hmm. fuck are you on? Instagram or social media talking about he need to sell out. Fuck you, yep. Kanye. And see, anybody else, I probably would have been like, because I do see where you're coming from. I get it, because it's some stuff like views. I had to wait for views. I like, guess some stuff to be coming on Apple, and I'm like, okay. I was fine to wait for views. Right. And Frank Ocean, well, well, that's true, but I've been listening to it, and I'm kind of feeling views, but that's fine. We could talk about it later, because you know I'm a Drake fan. And then I heard Frank Ocean, if his CD drop is supposed to be exclusively on Apple. So that's like, uh. Okay, well, fine. When we get that next year, um, I'm sure that <laughs> title will still be around and, or wherever he's going to put it. We, you know, you know, Frank Ocean's on my list because of his antics yesterday. Frank so I, I mean, I'm not. I not. just. 
drink ocean. And I put on and Channel Orange like, today to listen to Channel Orange just because in tribute to what Frank Ocean could have been. But right now, he's definitely playing us like Lauren Hill. He's definitely giving me Lauren Hill all day. And he's giving, and so I'm really like, mm, I held on to Lauren Hill for a real long time. Frank Ocean, you're not getting that benefit of the doubt because Lauren Hill fucked it up for you. So. And the thing is, Frank Ocean, when you do things like this and you drop something that might be, possibly could be, I, we don't know, mediocre, oh, we're going to come for your throat. Yeah. So you best to come with it. Yeah. I mean, you I need all more pressure to yourself. To yeah. Amazing. Um, because if like, none of them are shit or something that some if you decided oh you want to try some new style or you got some new mm, 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 right. i hope black twitter reads you for right. filth if, your if shit you try is to a pull a lauren hill uh, getting up on that stage with that damn uh, guitar singing about um whatever <laughs> singing oh, wow. i don't know what the fuck she was talking about i mean there's a couple songs on them little double bits but Let's all be for real. That shit was crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, what the it fuck was. is this? That shit was crazy. But um, so anyway, Frank Ocean, don't do that. Like, we cool. Um, and Kanye, you shut up. <laughs> that's like, the only words I have to use. Literally, you like, be you shut quiet. Up. Yeah, just be quiet. Play with your babies and just be the fuck Ooh. quiet. Like, just be quiet. Oh. Um, Nicki Minaj's brother DNA oh. tests come back, and it's a match. Oof. That I mean, was... did we ever doubt? I did not. I, did. I, <laughs> I know, know I like either. he might have been the only one, and that's sad in itself. But, um, like, girl, I don't really know what to say. I don't, you know, I don't do well with children, people I touching kids. Either. That's not I one of my either. things. And um, and I do have to remind myself that this is not Nicki Minaj this is her brother she can't be responsible for that but just a little side note I don't know how I missed this but this is the the one member when she paid for the wedding with him and the wife this is that this is that remember well that was a thing I don't know maybe two or three years ago they were saying she basically paid for his wedding like this big huge lavish affair or maybe it was this year right before this came out but evidently the child was the daughter of the woman he married. I didn't know that. I just Oh, uh, I didn't know that either. I know she was somebody they knew, but I didn't know how he knew her. Yeah, it was so he's been and this evidently has been going on for a while. Um shout out to shout out to Lovely T, who I don't know. I mean, she got damn near half a million subscribers. I don't know how I just discovered you, but shout out to her. I was watching her video on it. And she had picked up some or some other things I didn't even know because I've been trying in my head to separate Nicki Minaj from her brother. But then she was showing how I guess the day after she had paid for his bail, she was taking all these family selfies and, you know, they was online. And I was like, oh, OK, that's I don't know. That's kind of in bad taste a little bit, I feel like, because yeah. if I just bailed my brother out after he was you know convicted not convicted but charged with raping a child the last thing i'd be doing is wanting to be in a picture and smiling with him that's right the absolute last thing i'd be wanting to do so now i'm looking at Nicki minaj the way we looking at alicia and tweet i thought you was about women's mm. power but let me find out you some way talking about this little girl is fast I uh, yeah yeah because uh, yeah. you know mm-hmm. that's what they say the man oh, of course. the grown ass man raping a child but the child's face so right yeah anyway <laughs> moving right along entertainment um Charles Barkley TNT has decided to give Mr Charles Sellout Barkley a show <laughs> called the Race Card and. Uh, I'm confused because Charles Barkley actually has no idea about race. So I thought like maybe it was like a play on words and they were like, it was like a, a, a track and field kind of show. Cause I was like, it can't be about like race because Charles Barkley, didn't he say, I don't remember the quote, but I feel like it was after Ferguson. Didn't he say something like, he didn't know if slavery was that bad because he only knows what his grandmother oh. told him and what he read in the book. Isn't that, isn't that what he said? Well, I'm going to be honest. I don't keep up with Charles Barkley, and I had put him over on that other side with, like, O.J. Simpson, yeah. uh, Michael Jordan, 
and other people who really kind of like don't associate themselves with being black and have not done so for a very long time. So I kind of just stopped paying attention to him like literally probably a decade ago. So he probably could have said that. I would have never known. It would have never hit my radar because literally when his, I didn't even know about this. Like when I read that today in the email, I was like, oh, Charles Barkley still can draw an audience. Like he gets a show. He's like, what's this a for? show where he's talking um, about racism. Mm. Like, I just, I I mean, mm. clearly, you know, he's for yes. the whites, but I just remember oh, after clearly. That, uh, Ferguson, after all of after the uh, uprising had happened in Ferguson, he had like a lot of negative things to say. And I feel like since then, he's been somebody who's very much, what about black on black crime? You know, black people need to just Oh, yeah, no, quiet. he's definitely one of those like people. He's, he's mm-hmm. been one of those. And so I'm just trying to figure out, like, you know, I'm really at the point now. I'm like, well, fuck TNT too. Like, I mean, you ain't got nothing on there. I watch. Fuck you too. Like, because if you want to have a show, to me, where you talk about race in like an intelligent way, Charles Barkley is not the person who I would go to at all. Like, well, they don't want to talk about race in an intelligent way. They want to talk about race in a way that is going to be good for ratings, which means that it's going to be full of fucking niggatry. Um, <laughs> and so that's what they want. And they know that Charles Barkley, much like Stacey Dash and Omarosa and all these people who be on Fox News and those other places, that's the only reason why they are extending this to them because they know that they're going to coon oh. and say the things that they want them to say. And so that's all it is. Like, they, there's, wow. they do not want to have any kind of real, actual, intellectual conversation about race. They just want somebody that's going to be loud, which Charles Barkley is, and argumentative, which Charles Barkley is. And that's going to be that. I mean, he's going to be like a male Bill O'Reilly. Like, that's how I see that show going, where, like, you go on there and it's just going to be headache because he ain't going to let you get a word in edgewise. So you might as well just save your time. However... Uh, Francesca Ramsey, if they book you, please go on because I feel like you be giving the business and you don't let nobody shout you down. So yeah, she does. shout out to Francesca. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's what I feel like it, this is all about. It, it ain't finna be shit. Charles Barkley ain't shit. <laughs> this ain't finna be shit. And... No. Uh, let me yeah. just let me just read the description they're giving you about the series. The series will bust up the echo chamber mentality that so often has people retreating to corners of the like-minded where views are reinforced and ideas are distorted into angry, unexamined groupthink conclusions. Barkley Bitch, that is sounds not even like, that smart. Like, I, he's not first. even... Let's just, just start don't there. Say. Don't be giving me all these oh. big SAT words and these big, bright ideas. You talk about Charles Barkley about to lead it up like really okay that sounds like somebody's dissertation project absolutely (laughs) it absolutely uh, like abstract yeah (laughs) it absolutely does and i'm just trying to figure out um really like (laughs) this is what we doing right now like don't do that don't say charles barkley and then all these words at the same time that shit is crazy that shit's crazy but fuck um tnt fuck them too um Back to Kanye, him and Drake may be doing a collaboration album, which um, actually has me very, very sad, very sad. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I hate Kanye with as m- about the same amount that I love Drake. And it's, <laughs> ooh, it's I don't know how that's going to be. I guess that's how people felt when Future and Drake had a collaboration CD, because people who generally love Future generally hate Drake. So I'm that's probably how they felt. Now that now I know how that feels. Um, love and hip hop. <laughs> did you see love and hip hop? I did not. But shout out to Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter because between the three, I feel like I've seen it. So I'm good. <laughs> like, uh, so love and hip hop. I'm able to talk about every piece of it with detail because again, between the three, including the clip for what's gonna happen next week, like. Again, shout out to Instagram. Shout out to Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much know everything that's going on. Didn't uh, have to sit through an hour. No. It sounds like all the rest of y'all wasted y'all out. Well, I got everything I needed in 15 minutes. So, 
You did it. It the looks right like we way. got the same amount of information. Yeah. You did it yeah. the right way. I mean, to be honest, I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was terrible, terrible. Because I, I sat there and watched it. I giggled. Hasseline to me was extremely funny. Like she had some great one-liners. Um, <laughs> You know, she called, oh, no, that was Bambi that called, what's her face, a strawberry thought cake. That was the <laughs> highlight of the show. Um, what did Hasseline say? I think I tweeted it. She said something, and I was just like, okay, I'm done. This is enough. I've had enough. Like, she just, Hasseline was just giving it last night. I cannot even... I mean, she is despicable. She is. Don't get me wrong. She absolutely is despicable, but... um. She was so funny last night. Like I don't, I don't know why nobody's not talking about that. I thought she was funny. I really did. I okay. I, I'm going to I say know what she it. She said, "I'm sorry, real fast." She oh my told, god, please. She told KK to go drink some milk to make her bones strong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I thought you were gonna say it when she told her that she was sick. You sixty and a thief. <laughs> Go get a job. You better that. go to jail for selling <laughs> selling Chanel purses. <laughs> Chanel <laughs> <laughs> go get a job. Um, I'm gonna say it. I know this is not popular opinion. Oh, t- you know what? Tonight is dissenting opinions night. Yeah. Ooh, go dope girls. <laughs> um, even though, well, let me preface it with this. Even though what she said about Stevie and Eva was completely despicable and that will always stay as a mark against you in my heart. Um, Jocelyn won me back last night. You're off my list. Um, You were already at the bottom of it and now you just, I took you off. I feel the same way. Yeah. I love you, Puerto Rican princess. And here's why for the people who are going to be like, everybody today i've seen the narrative of like well jocelyn this and jocelyn that and jocelyn this and she was scary and she was this and she was that the fact of the matter is for the fourth fifth let me hip hop been on about six seasons Uh, jocelyn has managed to make a whole season and a whole reunion about her like a whole season and a whole reunion about her and she wasn't even really in this season, I mean, she was in this season, but you know what I'm saying? She got, she was like kind of exactly. heavy ish. Remember, she wasn't even on the first two or three episodes. Exactly. And then she was kind of there somewhat ish in the middle. And then she got kind of heavy towards the end when she was putting out, you know, getting everybody all together. But my point is, even throughout all the messiness, she still comes out on top. And you can't tell me she's not the highest paid person on this show because Mona knows if Jocelyn was not there, there would be nothing to watch on this show like everyone else is so dry boring and or just so far crazy off their rocker and then let me get to that really quickly for the people who don't like jocelyn there's no way you can sit up here and say jocelyn's a bitch jocelyn's crazy jocelyn's whatever and ride for tommy there's no way right there's no way right tommy to me is 10 times worse than Jocelyn. And that's fine if that's your cake. Like I said, I like Jocelyn, so some people like Tommy. That's fine. But if you can't see the hypocrisy in that and the fact that you probably only really like Tommy because you want her to fight Jocelyn, the fact that Jocelyn set up and went and got a restraining order, y'all be sitting up here like, oh, well, that means she's scary. No, that means that bitch is smart because Tommy don't got nothing to lose. Tommy got 32 mug shots. Tommy about to go to jail for something else. Tommy just got into it with the police for jumping out of the front seat of a car and then jumping in the back seat and being drunk and being getting belligerent with them and yep. this was just a month ago Tommy can't travel to go do the show that she's on so they had to move the whole show to her I wouldn't be messing around with her either her or KK so Jocelyn ain't scary she's smart she's not stupid because she's not trying to lose her life over no love and hip hop it's one thing to get into it with scary ass Mimi and y'all exchange some words and throw some drinks at each other that's fine because you know you're working with somebody who's sort of on the same similar level with you right. I'm not fighting no Tommy I'm not fighting no KK they just kill people KK had a, a, an attempted murder charge like no no they ain't got nothing those to live for. So that doesn't like, make they me ain't scared. got nothing yeah. to live for. And they ain't, if they come back, which I doubt, 
Um, they, it, it's just like, there's nothing there for them. Her jumping down to that. I agree with you a hundred percent. There's really, there's, what's the point? Like, what is the point of that? What is the point of that? Like this whole entire reunion one, everybody talked about how Celine, everybody, whether you hate her, whether you love her, you feel some kind of way about her. It was the Hasseline show. It was a Hasseline show, period. That's what it was. That's winning to me. That's winning. That's what she does. That's what she does. She's the star. I mean, she's a fucking star. And we're all tuning in to see what she does. She's the star. And I, I, I can't be mad at that. I can't be mad at that. And she's also funny because when she told her to go drink some goddamn milk, I was like, you know what? I see what you're doing here. I see what you're doing. And it's funny. I love it. I do. Um, she, I mean, her and the pregnancy, oh, that was strange. I was just like, um, oh, what are we, why are we doing this? This is strange. I didn't, I didn't really like that. <laughs> I thought that was strange. It's like, how you don't have a period for three months? Like you ain't been to the doctor? Like at the okay, very wait. least, it's one thing you, you miss a month. Okay. Cause you're stressed out. That does happen. Three months? Like you should, you, I need you to be, I need you to be smart in that way too. be smart in the fact that you're putting out your straining orders against hood rats, but also be smart about how you take care of your body. And I'm just thinking, okay, I have months. to give a three month story was well, okay. not me, but it's a story for somebody who I know. <laughs> um, this sub girl knows someone who was pregnant for three months and did not know it. She said the first month she actually forgot that she didn't have a period because I, we will i will say all of us probably have had like a like off month where it was like did we did i period that month so then i think in the second month when she recognized like hmm, i didn't have a period wait what was it i don't remember but for some reason she forgot this like something happened that second month and then by the time the third month had rolled around that was when she took the pregnancy test and then found out that she was pregnant so it happens. I'm sorry. I don't know. I I only wrote for Jocelyn because I know somebody who that actually really <laughs> happened to. <laughs> hey, you know what? Let me. You know what? Let me hop down off my high horse. I'm sure it does happen. I'm just saying, watching it, I was just like, oh, this is odd. Like I just watching it, I thought yeah. it was odd because I don't know. I've never been pregnant, so I'm just like, okay. I'm just thinking, you know, like. You know, oh but... no, the whole thing was I mean, but that shout out to Stephanie, the producer, who was like, But I mean, <laughs> you was just here yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, I think your face, your voice, your your voice, your vocal expressions, your tone <laughs> adequately summed up all of America's thoughts. <laughs> like <laughs> That was not acting, ladies and gentlemen, in that moment. Stephanie gave you the real. She came from behind the curtain and said, but I mean, you was just here yesterday. Like, she was very confused and like, this is some bullshit. I can't believe I get paid to do this. Stephanie looked like in that moment, she probably might have been running through her resume and trying to figure out, like, have I been at VH1 long enough to where I can get on own? Like, can I, do I know somebody (laughs) at Oprah studio who can give me a job because I have to get out of here like that's what I felt like Stephanie was going through in that moment you know when you have that moment at your job like I have to get out of here I can't do this anymore that's what I felt like Stephanie was going through and Stephanie if I if I ever meet somebody at our own girl I'm gonna I'm gonna be like listen it's a producer at BH1 like please (laughs) go save her yeah but anyhow well, yeah, I mean, I guess well, I think I honestly don't know how I feel about the pregnant. I'm not, I know, I know how I feel, but I don't, I can't say I'm 100% believing the pregnancy thing. I saw the pictures of her with the trainer, and to me, it just looked like she got a bloated belly. Like, it looked like she ate too much cake. That's and just like me. She's blowing it out, like, you know, she's pushing yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, because we're used to Jocelyn being like real thin, real, real skinny or whatever. So, but um, that's really like honestly, like I said, I watched all the rest, and like nobody else interest like piqued my interest at all. Like I, I don't care about. I actually don't care about Mimi or um Carly Red anymore. So I thought it was really fitting that they were sitting together because I was like, <laughs> yep, <laughs> we yep. could really get rid of both of them. Yep. That whole section was a waste of my time. Rashida and Kirk and y'all, I just. 
I really need Mona to just fire y'all. I don't know if like one of y'all is eating Mona's box and so she just can't let it go. But <laughs> this is like the third year that everybody been like, why are they on here? And you keep bringing them back. I don't understand. There's no I point for that. Either. You bring them back and then their scenes get progressively low, smaller and smaller. And smaller. Yeah. Like the only time you really was like really showing them was um the first season a little bit because I think you thought that people were more interested in Rashida than they were. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think the first season and then the season when he was being a complete fuckboy and was fucking her over. Yep. You show them there. But as as a united front, as a real married couple, you're not interested. Mm-hmm. And neither are we. And to be perfectly honest, I wasn't interested when they was when he was being a fuckboy either, to be honest. I really wasn't. I didn't care about that either. Kirk, I know Kirk is cheating. Okay, bitch. Don't really care. Right, I mean, no. like, that is how I felt. Like, I was like, I don't care. So, who cares? Um, Now, listen. Scrappy, I'm so glad you're with Bambi. Like, Bambi is... <laughs> I so like her for you, you, actually. Yeah, yeah, I do, too. I did too. When she turned around, she was like, don't tell me to chill, nigga. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Bambi is gonna be good for him. I like her a lot. She has that backbone that Erica would never have, no. and I appreciate her. Like I, she keeps Scrappy interesting to me, and I love that she like, yes, gives him the business. Yeah, the bit, be naive. I love that she gives yeah. the business. She, um, she, she a challenge. She's a challenge. She's she not gonna just take a shit. She said that she was like, oh, you think she beautiful? <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> she's just gonna write on TV. And you see, he got real quiet. Um, he, he got real quiet. He, he got, got like, real. I said, I only saw a 30 second clip and I was like, oh, okay, she got yeah. you together. In 30 real seconds. Fast. And she, he ain't say <laughs> nothing else. And he, he ain't say nothing else. And then the, the woman who was um, hosting the show, she asked another question. He tried to change it and then Bambi jumped in. You know, he tried to tell her to calm down. She was like, don't tell me calm down. <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? Tell that bitch to calm down. We're done with her. Get her off the set. And she got off the set. And she was escorted off the set. So I was like, okay, Bambi, I'm here for it. Last night, I think, was because I always, I have like Bambi, but she's been one of them people where it's like, when I see her on the screen, I'm like, oh, I like her. But when she's not there, I don't even be thinking about her. But right. last night was the first time I was like, okay, let me go ahead and click follow because I'm now I'm interested. Mm-hmm. I'm actually interested and I want to see what's going on in your life. So, yeah, no, like Bambi. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it. And then I guess next week, I'm actually sad for Chris with Mimi. I actually feel like Chris Ooh. thought, like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I was watching the next week thing and I was like, Chris is not acting. Like, no, that's she's not. not. She really yeah, thought she was with this girl. I feel bad for her about that. Yeah, she yeah. really thought she was with this girl. She really thought they were going to be together, and Mimi only needed you to be a cute face between yep. her legs. Yep. Um, and then a little bit on TV, so she could, you know, get that shock value. Um, yeah, right. Mimi used the shit out of you, but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And just one other quick thing. That's the other thing I want to say about <laughs> Mimi. Let me just say something to you, Mimi, because I saw the last episode. You know when they rounded out talking about where they at and their mm-hmm. life now, mm-hmm. and she's up. Oh, you know, Hasseline is mad with me because she knows Stevie loves me. He really oh, genuinely God. loves me. I did hear and that. I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, like, girl, no, you <laughs> didn't get on this screen talking about Stevie J love you. He has <laughs> played you like a fucking asshole for uh, every season. Uh, this is just what we see on TV. And you've been uh, for 15 years, he's been treating you like uh, this. And we see what he's uh, done on TV. I can't even imagine what he hasn't done on TV. Honey, that's not love. You and Jocelyn are in the same place. That's the thing. is mad because she thought that she wasn't going to get played the way he played Mimi. But no, yep. he played you just the way he played he Mimi. Did. Because that's what the fuck he does. That's why Hasselina is yep. mad. Mimi yep. is sitting on there talking about, oh no, because he loves me. Girl, even the season after he sleeps. Okay, Mimi. If you think no. that's what love is, Oof. and you damn near fifty years old, if you th- if that's your best perception of what it feels like to be loved, you have a lot of work to do. And ma'am, you she need does. to be writing your letter. Get your stationery out and get your pen together and write your letter to Iyanla and let her um fix your whole Ooh. life. Let her cut she you out. She actually does think that's love, and you are a 
thousand percent correct in that she is so delusional that she does not see because because that's the thing is that you know even last night jocelyn said you know even if she was making a reference to whatever and she was like she said why would he go be with this old bitch when he could come be with this young bitch he could get a bitch younger than me and probably will or something like that and jocelyn says things like Stevie sleeps with other people. Stevie fucks. Stevie will fuck anything. She said that to KK. She was like, "Oh, Stevie, will, Stevie will fuck anything moving or whatever." So you're right. And so, and actually, that's why I give Jocelyn a little bit of, not about the Eva thing. That was wrong, Jocelyn. Up. Up. That was real fucked up. But in terms of some of the other stuff, I get it, girl. Like you're upset because yes, you're right. He treated you and did did to you exactly what he does to I would assume all women that he messes with I'm not even just gonna say you two I mean shit Eve whoever else all his baby mamas you can run down the line so that's the other thing that to me I have found very interesting about this show is every season we see everybody give these opinions about I don't like Jocelyn, I don't like Mimi. My G- Jocelyn is stupid, Mimi is stupid. Jocelyn and Mimi are stupid. Jocelyn's smart, Mimi is dumb. Whatever that narrative is, every season Stevie gets to do all the despicable ass shit he wants to do, and then at the end he gets to wash his hands of it, just like he sat on that stage last night, right next to Tommy, like. I'm just going to be quiet and sit here with the innocent face Uh and pretend like I'm stupid and just don't understand anything that's going on. And I'm this big victim and everything like Jocelyn has just been so horrible to me again. Like you said, this is what we see on TV. I can't imagine what you do to Jocelyn Stevie. Like I can't imagine what you actually probably have put this woman through. I mean, I know she might be a little crazy, but I can't imagine behind the scenes. What when you he, do. When they yep. were on that balcony, he walked away and he's like, Oh, you looking a little, a little flabby right now. I was like, Bitch, that's exactly mm-hmm. what she called you a bitch. Good night, bitch. You a hoe. Because that's exactly what mm-hmm. you do. You are, you do what fuck boys do. No, you're not punching mm-hmm. her in the face physically, but you mm-hmm. do that thing where you try to tear her down and keep her down. And I'm like, Oh, okay, you doing that on TV? Because that's soon, it. Soon as you didn't get your way, soon as she didn't yep. come running talking about she love you and all of that and give you what you yep. need. You somewhere trying to tear her down like she ain't all that. She wasn't looking flabby. She looked good. She looked good because you know she stay in the gym. You know she keep her body together. Ain't nothing mm-hmm. on Jocelyn fast flabby. And you know that. Mm-hmm. And you saying that. You, you know try that. to hit her where you think it's going to hurt. Fuck you, Stevie. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I felt that way about him a long time. And honestly, too, remember that first? Yeah, remember the first season? Remember, like, honestly, I, 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 I will say. back and forth. With, there, well, not only that, but remember he, she got that abortion for him? Like, remember oh, all did. of that? And, I forgot about mm-hmm. that. Damn, and so I'm just sitting up here like, like part of me had of me in my brain is like I hope she is pregnant I hope it is your baby and I hope she take your ass to court and I hope she gets the the this new little residual check you done got from bad bad boy doing a little bounce I hope she gets that money because yep. you you sir you're the problem like I'm not giving Mimi a complete pass because she's an idiot too and I'm not giving Jocelyn a complete pass because she been played and she she probably should have used a better judgment too but you sir you are the ultimate problem and again I cannot stand that we sit at these reunions at the end of the season like oh just stevie he's he's the good guy he's on the bus he's Uh he's driving the bus (laughs) right what kind of shit what stevie's despicable and stevie's also very despicable years old and he He sure is around here playing with these young girls and treating people like this and he probably should go ahead somewhere and be with mimi but he don't want to be with Mimi because he's been walking over her all his life. And who want to be a woman you could walk all over top of? That's but, it. Um, but anyway, yeah, so fuck Stevie. And yeah, I'm still here for Hosseline, even though yeah. I get why y'all not, but I am. Um, So on to the sad news. No, we'll do that last. Melania Trump's new to bleak and nobody cares. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course not. That white privilege is yeah. a motherfucker. Like yeah. it is. And honestly, all the reason why I even learned about the news, even though they were plastered on the New York Post, but I mean, I don't, I'm not in New York, but was through 
Twitter, black Twitter, like black Twitter was making commentary about it. And from reading that, I was like, oh, you know, but mainstream didn't push that. I ain't even seen nothing about it in the subsequent days afterwards. No, what you know, you know what? Actually, let me tell you what I have seen. I was on, I don't know, was it Jezebel or USA Today? I don't know. I was on some like blog site. I think it might have been Jezebel and they were talking about the news. And they were, and the story, the arc of the story was, you know, why aren't we all championing behind her? And I haven't seen anybody, you know, I guess basically saying like, why is everybody so quiet? When people say this about this one, we were all like, oh, no, no, no. And we were championing behind them and building them up. And they were talking, they were trying to build it as a feminist statement. That's what they were trying to do. They were trying to build it as this feminist statement and pulling out how the New York Post had reduced her to body parts and they said, oh, she was leggy and how they had her body there. They were trying to make it a feminist issue. And Mm -hmm. I was just thinking to myself, like, you have got to be fucking kidding me. This world we live in is so fucking fucked up. You mean to tell me you're going to use Melania Trump, who's married to Donald Trump, who has clearly hates women, who has been very vocal and disrespectful towards women. You're going to now use his wife and try to build a feminist plat, put his mm-hmm. wife on a feminist platform when her news have got leaked. And but Michelle Obama, when she's somewhere mm. with a piece of an arm out while her clavicle showing, it's a problem. Like I'm just so confused. I'm so confused. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm and my thing confused. is, like when here's my thing, and I agree with everything you're saying. When People decide, okay, you know what? No, I'm not even going to go with that narrative. Really, my thing is, this is something that has been happening to Michelle Obama for eight years. For eight years, she has had to endure people calling her a monkey. National people. This is not like, oh, somebody on a blog somewhere. This is, these are reputable news sources Speaking about her, about her appearance, about her uh, tone. When she, I remember when they first, first, first ran for president, um, like his first, whatever, 2008, whatever that was. And I remember she said something on the campaign trail because at this point they were still whatever. And they read into that woman. I don't even remember what it was, but they read into that woman so hard that I remember the Obama campaign like took her off the trail. Like it was that bad. Like they was like, you can't talk anymore basically basically we're going to need you to come and be a trophy wife even though you are the most educated and highly employed first lady we've ever had i mean let's not act michelle obama left her job as chief of staff at a hospital like she was not sitting at the house being like i wonder what i can do tomorrow do i want to two ivy league schools she went to two. She went to two that rival her husband. She went to two. And, and that's growing up from, on the south side of Chicago. Bush, but I'm about to say, and she's not somebody uh, that comes from wealth. So she got no. into schools because she was the best and the brightest. Mm-hmm. She went to two. She was working at a law firm when her husband found her. So she was already on top of her shit when he was riding a pinto. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so for her to have to endure the things that she has had to endure like, again, not only then, but throughout the whole entire, I mean, she has, and shout out to Demetria Lucas, who sometimes girl, you get on my nerves, right. but you were right in your commentary that you wrote the other day, which is that Michelle Obama pretty much had to be perfect for eight years your children couldn't do anything wrong you couldn't do anything wrong you couldn't speak too loudly because you'd be an angry black woman you couldn't speak out because you'd be an angry black woman you had to basically just fall in line you know to support your husband you fell in line to support your husband that's what it is because michelle obama can be michelle obama could run the white house michelle obama could run the country but she had to pull herself all the way down to gardening duty just to appease white people because y'all were going at her for everything that she did oh she wore a dress it came from j crew i can't believe she spent 50 dollars on that dress i mean people were saying this about her we had first ladies spending millions of dollars on suits or whatever in the hell it is that they want Mm -hmm. whatever it is so to me 
this Melania Trump, now we want to try to make her a feminist and we want to try to like hold our laurels on that. No, hell to the no. Y'all gave Michelle Obama shit for eight years. If Melania wants to get up in this game, bitch just comes with it. We can't have it one way. You either going to have to start treating everybody equal, which is okay. We're not going to talk about first ladies and we're not going to talk about children, which is how it should be. That's fine. They're not running for president. So if you want to sit up here and be like, okay, we don't want to talk about other people who are involved with the thing, then that's fine. But if y'all have decided now, like, okay, well, first ladies are game or children are game. Well, then first ladies and her children are game too. So that means I will talk about Melania, Ivanka, Donald Trump Jr., uh, Donald Trump's first wife, Marlo, Donald Trump's second wife, Ivanka. I'm talking about all of them. I sure am. Because you all have made that narrative okay. And if you didn't want, and you've made it so for the last eight years. You've done yeah, that. So don't try yeah, to backtrack have. now. And now it's all like, oh, well, we can't talk about first ladies or presidential candidates. Why not? You've been talking about the first lady for eight years. Oh, you is it sure wrong? Have. You sure have. Because if a nude of Michelle had to come out, oh, uh-huh. my God. they uh-huh. well, I didn't think they'd have been able to stay on the planet. I think they would have all, the whole family would have had to leave the planet. Hey. Like, yeah. and she just. Been I mean, and this is, I mean, sh- listen, I'm all for a woman being free to show her body and do what the fuck she want with it. I am. However, I'm also knowing that as a, when you know you're a position of a first lady, you, there's just a certain thing that comes with it. And Melania Trump, your titties and cooch out on a cup of a thing. I'm just, that's strange to me. That's strange. And it's strange to me that it's very, everybody's very quiet. Every Bill O'Reilly, you ain't got nothing to say. Yeah. <laughs> You know, if you want to put your T-Ties out, then that's fine. My problem is that the double standard that's happening right now of, yeah. oh, yeah, about Melania Trump. Um, why not? Right. <laughs> and oh, honestly, poor Melania. If we're just yeah. Fair across the board. I mean, go find some pictures of, of Bill. I know they out there. Like, and that, that too, I'm going to be very interested in because I actually think I put this on Twitter or something the other day. It was actually right after. Uh, Hillary Clinton's acceptance speech and I was like I wonder how long it will take for the media to start talking about what he wore and how fast it took to sell out Woo! that's not going to happen ain't that funny ain't that mm. funny that's not going to happen I am looking forward to seeing Bill Clinton decorate the White House that's what I want to see him do yep. I want to see him give the Christmas tour that Michelle Woo! Obama do again has two degrees from Princeton, was relegated to. And this tree is for our veterans. Like, I, that's, yes. what I, that's what I want to see. And here's the thing. I, I'm sure Miss Obama does a lot of those things, again, out of support for her husband and his goals. But I'm not going to sit up here and act like this woman probably thinks decorating a tree in the White House is the most important thing that she's accomplished in her life. I Hell don't believe no. that. I don't believe that. And so I am very interested to see this narrative that plays out for Bill Clinton. And again, I want to see him treated just like all of the other first ladies who have came. I need to see his his tux in the museum. First ladies dresses. Oh, and the first tux. I want um, people to read him for wearing his... Hey, oh, you know, that shirt came from Givenchy and it cost $500. Like, yep. I want to see all of those stupid narratives. I want to see him come up with some crappy ass platform that he then has to go all across the country and talk about. Oh, I'm so uh, into children's rights or whatever it is. Uh-huh. Like, plant I trees. Want, he could plant, plant trees. trees. Mm-hmm. I want him to go plant trees and go talk about the importance of planting trees. Yep. I want all of that. I want him to have to pick out the China pattern. Um, I want him to be in charge of decorating the White House. Yep. That, that's one of the things I want to see from Bill Clinton. And if I see anything different, if I see Bill Clinton trying to insert himself into some actual policy work or trying to get his ass on uh, Capitol Hill, sir, sir, sir. No, 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 no. Former President Clinton. And right. somebody else said that to me the other day. They said, well, I wonder what we're going to call him. I mean, he's former President Clinton, a uh, first man. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. That's what we're going to call him. We're not going to yes. call him first. That, that's not the role he's playing right now. No one's not saying that he wasn't first. Uh, he wasn't a former president. But the role he's playing right now is that he's first man. That is yes. his actual title. He Just is. like on stationary is his first lady of the United States. He is his first gentleman of the United yep. States. 
Yeah, that's what y'all need to call. Fagotis. 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 Fagotis yep. in the house. Yeah. That's what I need to see for these next four years. And I guarantee you, if I see anything else, I will fly my ass to Washington, D.C. myself and go up to the White House lawn and be like, I need to speak with Bill because what's happening right here, <laughs> is not okay. What we will not do, what we will not do is act like you are second in charge because you are not. No, you are not. not. What you no, are is you've been relegated to the sidelines like every other first lady. And I'm going to need you to get in line. I'm going to need you to support your wife. And I'm going to need you to go plant a tree. And you know what? I think that's the thing that scares us because we live in a world where people can't imagine that. People yeah. like that's just not a world that we can imagine. And I think that is the thing more than anything else that's going, if anything keeps Hillary out of the White House is simply going to be because we can't imagine a first lady with a penis. That That's really what it is. Um, yeah. And so huh, that was actually really great because even myself, who I am, you know, I think I'm super woke. I never even thought about it that way. I never even thought about the way because I'm not even going to lie to you. In my mind, when I think of Hillary as president, I do think of Bill as her you know, her right hand man. And that's not what a first man does. It's not what a first man does. I I never thought about that. This is the first time. No, Mike, um, not Mike, but Tim Kaine is her vice president and she will also pick a cabinet that will also be her right hand people. I don't need Bill Clinton's opinions for the next four years. I really don't. What I need you to do is plant a tree. Like literally every time he talks, I'm gonna be like, did you plant a tree today? Right. Like what is your, what is your initiative? Where are you going to go plant a tree? I'm literally sitting, seriously <laughs> sitting up here thinking about how I can get a job at the White House at, uh, under him in his office because the First Lady of the United States has an office. She and has a, staff. a chief of schedulers, a staff. She has a whole staff. She has a chief of staff. She has a scheduler. She has a communications person. She, Bill, I need to come be your communications person and I'm going to come and set you up. We're going to get you a platform. It's going to be a cute little platform. And um, we're going to treat you affordable right around. housing. Maybe affordable housing. Oh, that's that's cute. Good we can that's go take cute. him through some dilapidated buildings. He can go shake some baby's hands and uh-huh. talk about the tragedy that people aren't able to have housing on equitable levels and we should be doing something about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what we're going to do with you, boo. That's all I need you to do. What I don't need you. And I, ooh, I hope that Hillary gives him the business. Cause honestly too, I feel like Hillary gets a little bit of vindication out of all of this. If she yeah. wins, like she gets to justify all of the fucked up shit that I'm sure she's had to deal with, with him. Yeah. And I can't wait until her cabinet meeting comes and she's at her round table and he comes pooching himself up to the door. And she slowly closes it on him. Like, Oh no, babe, you're not allowed in here. I'll see you at dinner. Okay. I'm at work. I'm at work. Go call Chelsea and see what she doing. Sure the grandbaby needs somebody to watch them. Can you get my best? started please i'll be up in a few minutes thanks and that book i was reading can you put it by the tub thanks could you could you be a doll could you be a love (laughs) could you be a love and go ahead (laughs) oh god yes tell the staff that i'll be served dinner out on the porch you know the one where fits and on the lanai yeah on the lanai right can you tell them i'm gonna have my dinner out on the lanai (laughs) yeah I'm going to need to see Bill Clinton sitting up with a glass of wine, sitting and waiting while the dinner gets cold. <laughs> She's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Or she calls and it became a theme. Wait, with that one, the song playing in the background, you know, from Poetic Justice. That, uh, <laughs> that should be playing on the record. <laughs> yes, I need that. Oh, I Bill Clinton is gonna be me. Olivia Pope <laughs> <laughs> in his all white outfit, mm. oh my God. tracing down the hallway real hard <laughs> with his bag <laughs> and his badass coat. <laughs> Whoa, Bill Clinton is Olivia Pope. Actually, that's that's my new that's my new logo, my new motto for the rest of this. Bill Clinton is Olivia Pope. Oh my God! He's gonna to sue himself. He is. He gonna be just like Olivia. You too much of a busybody, and he not gonna know his role. He not gonna know his place. You and know. I feel like he's gonna be putting his place real good and quick. So because well, I'm gonna like be around there searching for the hooch. <laughs> searching for the 
hurt he you really is. Put a hooch. Sure, he's gonna be all up in the cabinets. Does anybody know where the brown liquor is? Mm. <laughs> President Clinton. I mean, I'm sorry. First gentleman Clinton. <laughs> First gentleman Clinton. No. Your wife asked us to put that up, and so she did. The president asked us to put that up. We actually have to get a note from her to open this up. So if you could get a note signed, you know, then we'll see. Okay, so our last story of the night, which is very, very sad, um, it happened in Baltimore. Corinne Gaines, rest in peace. She was. The stories are conflicting. She was twenty-three, mother of two. She lives in Baltimore County, right outside of Baltimore City. A young woman, very pretty. Evidently, she had some traffic violations, you know, got a little crunk at a traffic stop. Uh, she had missed a, missed a trial or whatever, which happens because I that happened to me one time when because of my just because I just would move every year. And, you know, I mean, I didn't have a warrant. Nobody came and knocked on my door, but I almost missed a trial date because you just move. You miss it. She missed it. They got a warrant. Some people came to her home. There was a standoff. It was her and her boyfriend, I guess, were in the home. There was a standoff. They wouldn't come outside. The police were outside. The guy tried to leave. He was caught. She was still inside with her son. They're saying she had a shotgun. Evidently, the cops have said that they shot in there first. She shot back, allegedly. They shot again. She was killed and the child was injured, not dead or anything. But he was, I don't know if he was shot or if a bullet grazed him or whatever happened. But so that happened yesterday or the day before. And um, I don't know. It's just been a little bit quiet on Twitter. It definitely has because yeah. I didn't even know about this until you said something. And then I went and Googled it and was like, oh, is this what we're doing? And this kind of goes back to what we were talking about a little bit last week with the Dr. Dre situation. Like, this is what I'm talking about with the Second Amendment rights. You have a right to bear arms. She has a right to have a gun. You, Someone having a gun in their home yep. is not an immediate excuse for police to shoot it's no, not it's not it's not. No, it's not it's not and so again like you said the reports are conflicting they're saying maybe she shut fire at first i don't believe the police to be quite honest with you i don't either i believe that they probably saw or someone saw a gun and they went ham and so yes then she shot back which is what I as well would do because that's what the gun is for. Like it's mm-hmm. to shoot back at the people who are shooting at me. So anyways, this this is what I'm talking about with this freaking Second Amendment. And when people are like, well, we got to protect, you know, Second Amendment or protect guns for who? For white people? Because for you don't because those rules are thrown right out the window as soon as someone black does that <laughs> as soon as someone yep. black takes up the rights to bear their arms then it becomes automatically a reason to shoot them or a reason to pull them out their house and accost them and put them in the back seat and question them about their guns that they own legally that's in their home so i just what if this woman had no criminal record and i too have had the warrant thing happen to me i've actually spent almost a night in jail because of a traffic violation and turned into a warrant and I paid the ticket but because I paid the ticket late it had already turned into a warrant so my point of the matter is this is not a violent offense it's a not traffic ticket it's that happens to ticket. probably I would argue probably it probably happens to a lot of Americans I don't got no numbers uh-huh. in front of me but I'm pretty sure a lot of us have been in this situation because if you're saying it happened to you and I'm saying it happened to me we grew up in two different towns two different cities we just met each other five years ago so it seems pretty common that these things might be happening in different yep. parts of the country so and police can see that when they read the warrants they know what the warrant is for. Like it, they, it, it will tell you like, Oh, this warrant is for someone murdering someone. Like it, it says right. clear as day, like, Oh, this person had a ticket. And so we put out a warrant for her arrest. Cause she didn't show up to her court parents. Like it says that. So you knew that going in, you guys use that as an excuse to go in and get her boyfriend, who I guess is who you really were after. And instead of you being peaceful about it, or even if y'all decided to like kick in the door and throw in some gas mask stuff, I would have actually been okay with that. My point is, when did we go to the police just being able to just blaze guns on people? Like, why right. are we at this point For in our society? 
Yes, where the police don't have to explore any other options. Like, why are we at that point? Why are we at the point where the police don't just like ram in the door and again throw some gas mask stuff out and then be like okay bitch you're under arrest at least at that point everybody's alive like at least at that point people can still live i'm not saying it's right or wrong that's not what i'm arguing what i'm saying is that people can still talk about it the next day she could then still go and sue the police for unlawful entrance or whatever whatever the point is she'd be alive to do that at this point she's not allowed to do anything until she comes out (laughs) I mean, to be perfectly honest, I don't know. I mean, I'm just thinking like, okay, you're going to serve a traffic warrant. She don't open the door. Then you, I'm just thinking like, okay, well, you just leave and you you try to catch her another time. Like, I'm also trying to figure out why y'all was sit. Well, I mean, because according to the police, the story is they were there. She was holed up for hours and hours and hours and they had to evacuate the building and it turned into like this big thing. And I'm just trying to figure out is wow. that really how we are serving yeah. traffic warrants? Like, I'm just right. thinking to myself, you go there, she's not, because she didn't answer the door. She It's not like she opened the door and closed it in their face. She didn't answer the door, and they claimed they heard noise inside. Okay, but she didn't open the door to you. So I'm thinking, I don't know what the law is. I'm just thinking, like, over a traffic ticket, over a traffic warrant, you ain't got nothing else to do. You going to sit here and send resources over here for a traffic warrant? And you going to sit here for five hours and then end up shooting out somebody's building with right. a child in there? With a, and you know it's a small right. child in there? And you shooting into somebody's apartment with a small child? Even if she had a gun or whatever, whatever, you shooting into a building with a small child in there? And then there was a rumor they first, then the, I think the police had tried to say she's the one that hurt her child. And then it came out, no, she didn't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't her. That's a big ass lie. And it's just like Baltimore County police are, um, I'm just saying growing up in the city all my life, and I have definitely lived in the county a little bit. The Baltimore County police are definitely, definitely a different breed. And they are very much, if you think the Baltimore city police are something, the Baltimore County police are something else. Like they are even more than the Baltimore city police. Oh, are. I believe you. Yeah, they are real extra. I remember one night I was coming home, um, and I, this is when I was living in the county. I was, and it was late at night. I was by myself. I was driving up the street to my parents' house, and I was literally, when they pulled me over, I was literally, I could see my parents' house. Now, I'm <laughs> driving up the street. The guy pulls me over. He's like, yeah, I'm stopping you because you went through three stop signs and you were speeding. He sat there. And then they pull called like two. Of the, there were three police cars behind me. They were surrounding the car, all looking in the car. It's just me in the car. It's like two, three in the morning. And he sat there. We sat there for probably like damn near two hours while he wrote four tickets, one for each stop sign wow. I crossed, I passed, and also for speeding on the street that my parents live on that I was driving right. down that I had been down multiple times. No. I, <laughs> Needless wow. to say, when I went to court, all of it was thrown out because oh, yeah. you were an asshole. But this this is Absolutely. who the county police are. Because he thought he was about to get somebody. He thought he was about to catch somebody, mm-hmm. and he did. And that's why he had all that back up there, and they were surrounding the car. And it was nothing. And it was nothing. I, I mean, this is to her family. I just, and again, like you said, this is obviously not being publicized and not being talked about. And I'm sorry, that know. was my point i'm sorry that was my second point um because when philando castro and um alton sterling and not saying that their deaths did not need to be publicized but i'm just saying it seemed like a really big deal but corinne Gaines, i don't know if it's because the story isn't like as clear cut i don't know if it's because Mm -hmm. it's not on camera or i don't know if it's because she's a woman like i don't Mm -hmm. know what it is but for whatever reason it's just nobody doesn't really seem to be talking about it like Netta retweeted it and Black Girl Nerds was talking about it. Like I saw women on my timeline talking about it, but mm-hmm. a lot of the men, I didn't really. But I feel like it's always that way when something happens to a woman. It's up to the women to kind of continue the conversation because, <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't want to say what I want to say. I'm not going to go into Black okay. men today, but okay. I just got gotcha. it usually up to us to continue the conversation about us because you know even though boyfriend me and him were talking one day he said something like well 
not black women, like when we were talking about police brutality and police stuff, and I was like, it happens to black women. They just don't talk about it. I was like, it happens just like it happens to black men. And I, you know, I was telling him, and we talked about this on our show earlier this year, where Sandra Bland's mother went to go speak to the Congressional Black Caucus Mm. delegation or whatever, and she knew and talked about and wrote it down and had been following the cases of other women, black women who had died in weird or funny circumstances, just like her daughter. And it was like 45, 41 or 45 since her daughter, since Sandra Bland. And you don't hear about that. You don't. 45 women in jail who just came up dead for whatever reason, no one knows. And that doesn't get talked about. So again, yes, I do feel like women have to end up, saving ourselves as we always do and plus also saving the other half too so but again i said i'm not gonna get into that right now but i'm not surprised at all like i'm not surprised that it's not yeah and also i will say in terms of black folks and respectability politics some of that goes into it too probably right like let's say uh, why she sleeping with a drug dealer why she sleeping with a dude with no warrants why she have a gun why wouldn't her hair straight why wouldn't you know so if she doesn't have that perfect narrative then you know that also feeds into it instead of people just being like humans should have the right to be able to have a fair trial and in order for you to have a fair trial you have to be allowed to deal with yeah right Exactly. And that's what it is. As a police officer, it is not your job to convict somebody and execute them. That is not your fucking job. Your job is to keep the peace and to keep the order. And at that point, you being outside of her house, being aggressive, calling all her neighbors, embarrassing her, you right now are causing a fucking scene. You're yep. causing a fucking scene because I'm not going to lie. Somebody knock on my door right now. I'm not asking. Them. I don't give a fuck who's outside. I'm not answering the door. I'm a, you know what? I'm sorry. Sister dope girl. I'm about to tell a story. Um, and she know <laughs> I'm about to tell a story about one time I had to get crunk on the police because this is the shit that they do. She was dating this guy. You know, he's a fuck boy. Clearly this was years ago. That was a right. long time past. He, um, I guess he knew a couple of police officers, whatever. She called me one night. She was like, um, she was like, yo, the police are at my house and they got a spotlight. Like they really pulled up on her street, pulled their car. Like she pulled their car perpendicular to her house, turned their spotlight on and Mm -hmm. had the spotlight on her house, had been knocking, knocking, knocking on her door. She would not open the door. She's like, I'm not opening the door. I didn't call you. What's going on? So they talked to the door and they like, you know, such and such. They said you got his ID. And you got his TV, and we here to get his ID. What fucking police officer you know coming to buy? She called me, girl. When I tell you, I hopped in that car. I was on two wheels to her house. I was like, oh no, you won't. With my, it was my sister in the house and my nephew, who was probably maybe about seven or eight at that time. So she, he was asleep. This was late at night. It was probably like eleven o'clock at night on like a Wednesday. He, they came to her house. Had they, I pulled up. I was like, what is this? What's going on? I'm not right. coming She needs to open the door. Such and such. I mean, uh, calling an AC. Uh, I'm like, do she you have a warrant? The door. I'm like, she doesn't <laughs> right. have a warrant. For, they have a warrant for nothing. What are you here for? To get what? To do what? Who sent you? Why is your light on her house? Why are you over here? What is your name? Would not give me their name. Would not give me what oh, precinct. Are you are you in the north? Are you are you in the northeast district? Are you no, they're not in the northeast district. They're somewhere all the way over in southwest Baltimore. Why the fuck are you over here? Wouldn't give me their name, all of this stuff. Well, they call we have a report that she has this ID. Mm-mm. Where is it? Mm-mm. She'll have nothing mm-hmm. in here that belong to him. Nothing. What are you here for? Right. So this is what I'm saying. These are the kinds of things that, that the police officers do. And this is just the story that I know of. They ended up leaving. They did end up leaving because they knew they were wrong and they weren't used to somebody questioning them and it was nothing that they could say. And they mm-hmm. knew they were wrong. And so if I were her and the police were to come to my door right now, I would not open my door either because I haven't done anything. Nope. You know, I'm not I, opening oh, me my door. as well. I'm Correct. not opening my door. And for you to just decide that you're going to shoot through my front window, mm-hmm. I can't even imagine. Wow. Exactly. Wow. Well, just I do need to end on a little bit lighter note. This is really quick because um, it was not on our list. But 
I just want to say that Instagram, you won my petty awards for the week. <laughs> probably for the month. Probably actually for the rest of the year. Um, for everyone who say. may not know, Instagram included um, what they like to call a Snapchat like feature. This is a quote. <laughs> And not only that, this this is what, so they introduced this feature. It's pretty basic. It just kind of does the 24 hours. Like you can take a quick snap and then move it on or whatever. But you know what's coming. But right. you, you know you know Mark Zuckerberg is coming for that head. You know he is. He's just slowly figuring it out. He has his best nerds sitting around programming, trying to figure out like how many filters we're going to put on here. Um, right. 80? 85 we're gonna make it free like how, how are we gonna do so you know he's sitting up here coming for that head but here's what i also love this is what took the petty to a whole nother level so not only did you just basically take this concept um the instagram like cfo or whatever the guy under mark zuckerberg was like oh yeah no we appreciate snapchat for uh innovating and coming up with a new concept <laughs> Um, ideas are meant to be shared by everyone. And so we thank them for coming up with that. And now we're going to use it. So they said, oh, yeah, no, we give the credit to you. Boop. And now we're going to come for that ass. I said, Ooh. oh, oh. So I just had to give a shout out. I Listen, for the people, if you haven't listened to this show long enough, you have to know that I revel in petty and I like a good, like, ruthlessness like i i love frank underwood from house of cars like i like ruthless people yeah. i like people who like leave nothing for you like they just they gonna cut you with the jugular and you're done and i just mark you just so masterfully oh and here's the gag as um what's her name Kiki would Palmer. say <laughs> right it's the gag right the gag is um Facebook slash Instagram, because y'all know Facebook is owned by Instagram, tried to buy Snapchat a few years ago. And I think they offer was like three billion dollars and Snapchat because, you know, the Snapchat boy was feeling himself, which I'm not mad at you. I understand you. You was you was feeling yourself, too. And well, as well, you should. Um, He was like, yep, nope. Going to go ahead and give that a hard pass. Now, currently, Snapchat is valued at $19 billion. So I wow. hear what you were doing. Uh -huh. But the thing is, the thing is, you let it like you let it sit, boo. You let it sit. And y'all ain't came up with nothing that like is super, super innovative about Snapchat that like would keep somebody there. So again, yeah. all Mark Zuckerberg has to do is figure out how to put these filters on here and y'all are done. Like I'm I'm sorry. Like Well he you can he, write on your picture. You can use your finger and like write yes. on your picture. So there are things you can do on, oh, no. on it. I'm saying when Mark Zuckerberg figures out how to do that on Instagram. Oh. When all of that becomes available on your Insta Snap, because that's what I'm calling it. When everything is, because <laughs> I'm petty, because <laughs> I'm petty, I was like, oh, Insta Snap, I'm, I'm here for this. Here's the thing. Here's what Mark Zuckerberg has over you, Snapchat, Facebook. He has Facebook, which interfaces with Instagram, which now is going to interface with your Insta Snap. Whereas I got to go all the way out to Snapchat, which doesn't seem like a lot. But if I could take one more app off my phone. Mm. Mm, yeah. So as soon as he comes up with them filters and figure out how to let you write on your pictures, I would say that y'all will probably be back at the negotiating table. <laughs> mm. Mm. And again, I mean, I may not have a degree in finance from De DeVry. <laughs> like Maya. <laughs> but... Uh, it's just a numbers game at the end of the day and Mark Zuckerberg has those numbers and I, I would, I'm telling you Snapchat guy if you don't sell to him once he comes up with these other features on Instasnap that you guys have on Snapchat if you don't he's going to keep coming for your head until you basically your, your company going to be valued at shit and then you're going to have to sell it at a bargain basement price so what I would say is you probably should give Mark a call this week be like, let, what can we do? Let's sit down. Let's talk about what we can do where I can still maintain me some ownership and still be sitting in on my stock. And I let y'all in as part business. That's what I would do with what my I'm degree from finance. Is, right. From what DeBry. we're saying is Snapchat, don't be Vine. 
because oh, boop, you see boop, what happened when Instagram. Because remember how Instagram, y'all probably don't. Remember, Instagram sure used to did. just be still shot. Sure did. did. Sure did. And then Vine came along and allowed you to do all these interesting things, sure and videos, and people were starting to pr- go over there. And Instagram mm. said, "Wait, you could do that here. Just put that on here. Don't we'll just be put Vine. that on here. That's all I'm saying. All I your mean, friends I, are I'm already not on here. That Vine isn't like popping in a little bit, but nobody's mm-hmm. really on Vine. Like they, nobody's on it Vine. It was like a good three to five weeks. I'm gonna say that Vine was the shit. About three to because I'm not gonna lie, I, I would jumped on Vine a little bit. I was like, okay, this is cute." And Instagram mm-hmm. said, no, we got them videos. And then Instagram came back and said, no, we got you on like 30 whole seconds. Like, or is it a minute? It's something real long. Oh, now it's a minute. It was 30 seconds and now it's a minute. Now you can do minute long videos. Oh, I know That's because the videos are part. real, real long. And it's like, okay, they now are. you starting to come a little bit for um, YouTube snap because, you know, because you can get a lot done in a minute. You really can. Listen um, again, right. and I like Mark Zuckerberg. That's fine. I don't care. Um, but I do. I I do. I like ruthless people. And yeah, you will find yourself like Vine real good and quick. Because I'm telling y'all, the only thing that really make like you, everybody's on Facebook and Instagram. Like Snapchat, you might be on, but you may not be. Or right. Vine. Maybe like those are optional ones. Those are ones that like maybe you might do it because your friend is doing it or so and so or whatever. But everybody, Mark Zuckerberg has the benefit of being like, I have Facebook and everybody can play off of Facebook. So now you don't have to go search it like my Snapchat. I love Snapchat. I do. I don't have a problem with Snapchat. So by the way, let me also throw that out there. This is not a critique of Snapchat. I like Snapchat. I, I use do Snapchat. Too. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. The issue, though, is you got to go find your friends again. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to go find people that I like that I already follow on Instagram. Like, even famous people, even people who I want to follow, I got to go through Snapchat. Well, I got to go through Instagram, find their name, because they're everybody all on Instagram. Like, here's my Snapchat. So I got to go on Instagram, find their name. Snapchat is not user-friendly for us old folks. That's the other thing. That's the other thing. It's not as user friendly. It's really not. It's not. It's very and Mark is very good at putting it down to yeah. the basics. And so that's what I'm saying is if you can get the right kind of things, the same kind similar things on Instagram Snap, Insta Snap that you can get on Snapchat. Yeah. I can see a lot of people being like, Okay, so what we're we gonna do is stay on this Insta Snap. Because right. again, that's one less thing. You have to think about the consumer. Like if I don't have to go to five apps, if I can go to two, then I'm gonna go to two and still get the same thing done. And more people are gonna see my stuff on Instagram. Why? Cause I got my friends already yep. over there. Yep. Yep. So yep. it's more beneficial for me to put my stuff on Snapchat because the whole point of Snapchat is for somebody to see your snaps. So if they're going to see my snaps on Instasnap, then what am I going to do Instasnap? Instagram, I mean, Snapchat for it. That's right. 10 people as opposed to 110 people over here. Like that right. doesn't make sense. That's just, it it's a numbers game. It again. is. And the thing about Snapchat, I think the good thing, I think the thing that people are excited about is that you put something up and it disappears so you can't see yep. it no more, which was like the, yep. the cool thing about it. But yep. now they have all these programs that you can download people's snaps, you can see yeah. it again, you can save it to your phone. Like, you yeah. know, so it's like, it's not even like anonymous or like forbidden like that anymore. Ooh. So it's, it's just like, what, okay, what y'all doing? You know, right. you, you put up, saying, you put up 15 innovated. seconds, yeah, you put up 15 uh-huh. seconds of a whatever, and you put some little face filters on, and I'm going to be real honest with you, I'm tired of looking at people with the dog face pulling put, put the tongue out, like, okay. Pretty much, that's all, I get it, and again, you can get a filter anywhere, pretty much, so as soon as Mark Zuckerberg figure out how to program that in the Insta Snap, yeah, we're, I'm done. So, yeah, yeah. so sorry so we just want to end with that final some finance note from our finance degrees yes uh, yes and a quick, just a, let's do a quick shout out to justin jay because justin jay shows us justin, justin jay, jay i know you don't know but we watch everything you do and you show yeah, two dope yeah, girls more mm-hmm. love then, um, I mean, you show us love like we're paying. We follow you on Insta Snap. Yeah, we follow you on Insta Snap. Yes, we do. We follow you everywhere. All my notifications are on because I need to know everything that's going on. Yes. Anyway, so shout out to you, Sue. Yeah. So, yes. 
So this is Two Dope Girls. Uh, thanks to everyone for listening. You know, follow us everywhere, whatever. It's going to be somewhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. All right, Dope Girl, thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.